Good evening and uh, special greetings to all the women of Seychelles. Indeed, today we are celebrating the International Women's Day. The theme for this celebration is Choose to Challenge. The First Lady, Mrs. Linda Ramkalawan, and the Women's Caucus in the National Assembly will from now on work together on laws which affect women and children. Mrs. Ramkalawan met for the first time with the caucus today on a familiarization visit at the National Assembly. This was at the invitation of the caucus, a visit which also coincides with Women's Day. I would like to wish all women in Seychelles a happy Women's Day and to tell them that I know that life is not that easy nowadays with the situation of COVID, but I want them to be strong. As, as we know, women are very strong and uh, just keep the faith and they, will, and they will overcome the troubles they're facing today. The week-long activities to celebrate International Women's Day officially started today with a roundtable discussion uh, on the theme Paving the Way for the Future and it was organized by the Ministry for Family Affairs. The discussions centered around the experiences of various young women who have confronted many challenges and how they have empowered themselves in order to come out triumphant in life. The panel discussion, which was being transmitted live on Facebook, was led by Mrs. Barbara Carolus André. The event was attended by various guests, such as First Lady Linda Ramkalawana. Also on the occasion of the International Women's Day today, 10 women have completed their certificate after completing a one and a half year sewing course. The course was organized by United for a Purpose Brigade, an NGO whose aim is to help vulnerable women, especially drug addicts and their families. These women have learned how to sew bag, face bags, uh, among face masks rather, amongst others. Some of their products are now on sale at the National Museum in Victoria. The chairperson of UP Brigade, John Ondiek, says the skills these women have acquired will enable them to progress in life, but they still need our help. These women need startup money. They need money to boost up their business. They need money to buy materials. They need money to rent a place where they can continue doing the work that they are doing. Don't let these women go back to the streets. Don't let these women go back to where they were before. They are struggling. They just need a small push for them to see the light. They have gained the skills. They have gained the confidence. They can do it. And today we are also celebrating a Commonwealth Day. The British High Commissioner, along with the Indian High Commissioner and the Sri Lankan Chargé d'Affaires in Seychelles, donated snacks boxes to the occupants at the elderly homes on Mahé. The donation was officially presented to the director of the homes, Vincent Germe, at Plaisance today. Today also marks the International Commonwealth Day, which is observed on the second Tuesday of March each year. This day signifies the cultural and historical ties between the member states and the ties they all share with the British Empire, which is a common link between all the member countries. To commemorate this day, the British High Commissioner for Seychelles, Patrick Lynch, along with the Indian High Commissioner for Seychelles, General Dalby Singh Suhag, and the Sri Lankan Chargé d'Affaires in Seychelles, Tarush Gunatilake, donated snacks boxes to the occupants at the elderly homes on Mahi. I think for us, the, the Commonwealth is a about uh, shared history, but more importantly, it's about shared values. It's about democracies working together to overcome shared challenges. Uh, I think the global pandemic of, of COVID-19 is, is a perfect example. Here in Seychelles, we see the world leading vaccine rollout. The government of Seychelles has already provided protection to an incredible 82% of its vaccination. That is only possible because the government of India has kindly supported the production and delivery of the vaccine 
And of course that is only possible because of the huge investment the UK government made in the, the research and development of this vaccine. So for us that, that's a perfect example of, of Commonwealth nations working together, a family of nations with, with shared objectives. On behalf of all the elderly, Father Peter Rat, an occupant of the Plaisance home, thanked everyone for their generosity. I want to tell you something about elderly people. Yeah, we live in an elderly home. I live down there, number eight. It's not as though we're isolated because we have a very, very wonderful, caring team here. But some of us haven't got people that come to visit us. Some of us have, but some haven't. I don't have anybody. So on my own behalf and behalf of all these, I thank you for caring enough to bring us a donation. It's not only for the donation's sake, but it's because somebody cares enough to think of us at this time. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. Thank you so much. A very kind gesture indeed. The National Assembly has approved the budget of four entities that falls under the umbrella of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Family. It was a full day session with the representatives of the ministry. Early this morning, the National Assembly approved a budget of just over 20 million rupees for the National Youth Council. That's a reduction of about 6 million rupees. The minister responsible for sports, Marie-Céline Ziallo, noted that the reduction will have minimal impact as the council, the NCNYC, will in future concentrate on its work as a council rather than organize activities. The intention is to allow the youth to take over the responsibility of their district activities that will naturally have to be approved by the council rather than spoon feed them. Youths will be welcome to come up with innovative ideas. Furthermore, the private sector will play a leading role to help youths in districts. Regarding the role of youth workers in the district, Minister Ziallo said there would have to be restructuring, but no one has been made redundant yet. The Assembly also approved a budget of just over 13 million rupees for the National Council for the Elderly. One of the main issues that came out during the debate was whether there had been a scheme by individuals to swindle money from residents of homes for the elderly. Minister Marceline Ziallo said she was aware of such incidents, a full incident. A full investigation is currently underway. The last budget taken up by the National Assembly today was the budget for the National Council for the Disabled. The 2.7 million rupee budget is a slight decrease compared to last year's budget and uh, Minister Ziallo announced that the Council will from now on be placed under the Department of Family Affairs. And that's it for this news summary. I'll see you in a bit for the news in Creole. Good evening.